Hi, I'm Pete Scargill, and we're going to today have a look at the Arduino Starter Kit with Logic Analyzer by Zero Plus. There is the Zero Plus um, Analyzer. That's the manual you just saw there, output on the screen. I'm going to show all of these items separately and the program that I put together to do the testing. So what we're looking at is there is a genuine Arduino, three buttons, no resistors, uh, an I squared C to a lead driver board that comes with the starter kit and uh, precious little else really um, USB back to the PC for the Arduino USB back to the PC for the logic analyzer three buttons press one of them the red lights come on press the middle one the green lights come on press the bottom one the blue lights come on it's about as simple as you can get press long press the first button they all go off so red green blue and off so what we're going to do now is have a look at the code used to generate that and then we'll have a look at the analyzer so the code is quite simple. This is a standard Arduino uh, 1.85 setup. An additional benefit to uh, reading about this piece of code is I'm going to introduce you to the one button library, which is an excellent way to do away with timers and interrupts and all sorts of things when you want to drive buttons on your Arduino. So basically we have two includes the wire library, which is standard, and the one button, which you need to download, and that's simple enough to do. So the wire library lets us do I squared C, the one button library handles the buttons. Then we have four definitions um, for information we're gonna send out of I squared C to light the LEDs up. We need a definition for red, green, blue, and back black. And as you can see, these are just a byte in binary we're only interested in the bottom three bits, one for each of red, green, and blue, and they are inverted as it happens. So if you want a LED on, you set the output bit to zero. So you can see that least significant uh, digit is zero there, um, while the other two are ones. On the red, it'll be the second uh, digit that is zero. And on the blue, it'll be the third digit. If you want black, you just set all three to one. The device that we're using on the little LED board is a PCF8574 and it has an I squared C address, which just happens to be OX20. You get that straight from the data sheet. I'm going to need three buttons and I've just picked arbitrary ports, nothing special. I picked 9, 8, and 2. There could have been any ports. In order to save the hassle that you normally have with buttons and debounce and all the rest of it, you have to set a few simple things up in this library. Uh, and there you go. Uh, the one button library, I'm going to create button 1, 2, and 3. And they refer to the buttons that I've just defined above. Once that's done, we have the standard setup and loop function. Setup happens once, loop happens all the time. Let's have a look at the setup. We're going to define those three pins as inputs with pull-ups, which saves us having to have resistors uh, for the buttons that we're going to ground. We then start the wire library up. That's our I squared C. And we have here four calls and what these do for the buttons is they create what they call callbacks. One for pressing two, one for pressing button three. And a fourth one, just to show how you do it, for what happens if you long press button one. So there's the first one. Now, what that's defining is a function that we will fill in later on. You'll see that in a minute. Same with two, same with three. And again with the 
long press on button one. I could have put long press on all three buttons, but uh, for the sake of simplicity, I've just done the one. In order to send something I squared C to the LEDs, we're going to need a function. And as it happens, it's very easy. The function is called send to LED and we're going to pass a color to it. It's going to start the I squared C transmission at that address. It's going to write the color and it's going to end the transmission. This is a really simple example. Remember I told you about uh, callback routines? Well, there they are. There's the four of them. And they just simply call, turn the LED to red, green, blue or black. Our loop function is reduced to simply um, little functions which are written for you, which actually just monitor the buttons and do all the things you would normally have to do if you were trying to debounce buttons, but you don't have to do that. So that's it. That's that's the code. That, that works. Uh, you've seen it running. So let's get on to the analyzer. The logic analyzer that comes with the Zero Plus kit simply plugs into USB and this is the program that they supply that runs with that analyzer. The company are particularly proud of the software and you'll probably see why in a minute. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to set it up and running and then capture pressing two different buttons and what comes out of the I squared C. So the first thing to note, clean interface, uh, very simple looking. Uh, actually, there's a lot in those menus, but you don't need to know about most of it when you're just starting up. So what we need to do is we need to set the analyzer so that the data line, which is A0, uh, triggers on the rising edge. And you do that with that little box that you see there. Hope you're looking at this full screen incidentally, otherwise it'll look a bit bit awful. We're going to select the I squared C protocol, pretty much standard defaults. And the next thing we're going to do is start off the analyzer waiting for a signal and we're going to press a button. We're waiting, I'm going to press the button and there's our first signal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save that on disk captured all that information, save it on disk and then press another button and then I'm going to compare the two. But the first thing to note, I'm just going to zoom in here, is this has already analysed the data. You'll see there in the orange at the top that the device address was OX20 and we sent byte value 5 to the LED. It's all very easy and very straightforward. The only issue I've got right now is where I'm pointing to the data there. You can't really see it because it's in very dim red. I haven't figured out how to change that color yet. So now I'm going to save that file on disk. I'm going to start the analyzer off again and I'm going to press the second button. And again, we see our signal. The only difference is that this time, the data in green, the number has actually changed. But how do we tell what the change is actually in the data itself? Well, I'm going to save that file. I'm going to open the original. And I'm going to compare the two. I'm going to set up the defaults. And as you can see now, we have the two signals side by side and we're running a comparison on them. Not sure how easy it's going to be to see on that screen, but further along where the data is, do you see towards the end of the data a squiggly line up at the top. There it is. That is the only place where the data is different. And obviously the difference between 05 and 06 are just, uh, just a change of the least significant bits there. And you can see with that squiggly line where the differences are. 
And that is basically it. That's a, just a simple use of the analyzer. Um, when you see the software and you see the number of protocols supported, I think it was 33 protocols or something like that, and they're in a plugin library, so presumably one can access even more protocols. I've done this and I've done a serial analysis of serial data, a very similar thing, except you're only talking one wire, of course. And there you are, there's the, uh, there's the drop down box for the different protocols. So again, deceptively simple, but actually quite powerful and um, very nice to look at as well, which is always a bonus. Thanks for looking in. Please subscribe to the channel and take a look at the blog. There's some information at the end of this video for you.